Not a day goes by in the market lately where we haven't seen some sort of fearful news. The latest thing we're seeing is auto loan and credit card interest rates hitting new record highs, student loans hitting new record highs. The debt crisis is real, but the market keeps going up. Which is it that you want to trade? Do you want to trade the news headlines or do you want to trade the markets and be in tune with where the markets are going? Remember the old saying from Warren Buffett, be fearful when others are greedy, that's the top, and be greedy when others are fearful, that's typically the bottom. That's what we're looking at specifically in today's video, so make sure you've liked and subscribed. I've got some massive charts coming up for you in just a moment. Fear and greed and this little beauty here, S&P 500 stocks in bear markets. Of course, this is all going to come together as we look forward into April for Bitcoin. What is Bitcoin doing after the FUD that we've seen in the last 24 hours with CZ and all that crap going on in cryptocurrency? All right, guys, like you've already done, like and subscribe. Thank you very much for smashing that like button on those last uh, videos. Top of the video description is our free crypto and economic report. Drop your details down there, a top video link there. And for the Aussies, they've doubled their deposit bonuses on SwiftX from 10 to 20 bucks. Check that out down below. All right, guys, let's start off with the fearful news as we continue to pile on all of this craziness that goes on in the markets that leads to our wall of worry. As the markets rise, we get bad news after bad news after bad news. But what are we trading? Are we putting our money in the headlines or are we putting our money in the markets? And of course, if we do that, we want to try and buy low and sell high. Remember what we've talked about at lows, there is always guaranteed, you can bet on this if you could find a market to bet in, at the lows, you're always going to hear bad news. It has to be that way. If there was a ton of good news at the lows, it wouldn't be the lows anymore, would it? It'd be the tops. And we always hear all of the good news at the tops. This time, I'm reading a little post here. This guy is good. I've talked to him before, so nothing against the people themselves. It's really just about the data or the way they um, do their analysis on the data here. So auto loan, credit card interest rates just hit new record highs. We're looking at uh, average interest rates, 24%, used cars, 14%, new cars, 9%. So these interest rates are quite high. Meanwhile, we have record level debt. So 16 trillion in household debt, auto loans, 1.6, credit cards, nearly a trillion. Worst part, student loans, 1.6 trillion. So there's all of this fearful news coming out, but the markets keep going up. This has happened before. In the 80s, we had very high interest rates and the markets kept going up, albeit it was the end of the cycle. So eventually we will flip bearish, but Looking at our 18.6 year cycle, it looks like we still have a few more years to go. Now, I posted this on the channel. I've talked about this for many, many years now here. And this is something that Akil has put together. So he's part of property share market economics. This is the cycle. This is the real estate and economic cycle. Regardless of what is going on here, this is just how the markets work. The markets continue to go up, especially in the early stage of the cycle on the back of all of this bad news. So at the moment, we're, we're heading into this section right here, huge infrastructure, spending, commodities, boom. We've just seen oil prices jump from $65 up to about $80 now a, a barrel. So we're going through this stage right now. And roughly speaking, it's about seven years from that low. So we've got a low in 2020. And for the real estate, which is what this is built on, this is house price, as you can't see on the side here, but it's house prices, economic growth, not the peaks of the stock market, not the bottoms of the stock market, but of the economic cycle. And so through that period of 2020, when obviously the pandemic happened, we had those lower prices. So we're working our way out of that now. And you have to expect there's going to be a ton of bad news. But at the end of that cycle, when everyone jumps on, on board and is feeling quite bullish, it's typically the end. So get very fearful when that comes. We're expecting that sometime 2025, 2026, maybe the stock market goes on that little bit further, but we'll probably start to see a rounding top somewhere around that 2026 area, especially for land prices or what you in the US call housing prices or the housing market. Essentially, it's real estate and the value of the land actually goes up, not the house. The house is just the bits and pieces built on top of the land and the land is where the value is. 
The value at the moment is definitely in the S&P 500, up 18.6% from the October low, which we have been basically calling to be the cycle low from the peak in January. So the market topped out in January 2022, and it seems like this is pretty much the low. Not 100% confirmed yet. I still want to see this market get above 4,200, but look how damn close we are getting now. 41.52. Yesterday, it closed at 41.53 and a half. This is getting very, very close to taking out the 50% level at 41.55. So that's the major 50% there from the all-time high to the bear market low. A nice break above that is a good sign. And then around 4,200 points, which is the top here in February, and also is a pretty significant resistance level that's formed since February and March and had a little support here in April, May, got rejected in June, uh, also rejected in August, a little breakout and then back underneath again, rejected in September, rejected again in December, rejected again in February, and now we're attempting to hit that level in April. So you can see eventually these sorts of things will break down. And I think we're probably nearly there in this month. Try and find someone else in the entire space that is this contrary at this point in time, a contrarian looking at October being the low and we're looking at higher prices for 2023. Not all time highs, but just higher prices. And it's exactly what has happened. 18.6. I can't lie with the data right now. We've gone up from October 18.6%. That's where we currently sit. Watch the support levels in case we do have a little pullback, but I think probably April, we still have a little bit further to run. Now, over to some of the cool looking charts here, fear and greed model. We are putting in higher and higher lows. Remember what happened with Bitcoin. We put in higher lows on the crypto fear and greed index. This time, this is for the stock market, the fear and greed model. Essentially, the market sentiment is becoming less and less fearful with each of these lows. This is the June low. This is the October low, uh, September and October there. Then we had another low in December, late December into that early January period before it went into that peak in Feb. And now this recent low with the banking crisis, collapse of everything going on in the US, and then that contagion trying to spread across the world, or at least the media trying to do that. And then you have all of the big analysts uh, across Twitter and the media and YouTube and everything else like that are trying to tell us that the market is going to collapse now. Or what I've recently seen in terms of their narrative is that now they're extending that to the end of the year that we'll look for a collapse. Now, I think that's going to confuse a lot of people because we'll probably continue to run up here, maybe for this month, and we'll see how that happens into May. But if you watch Saturday's video, I gave a bit of a forecast there. Once we stop, and then if we get that little rollover, which has to happen, we obviously have to have a correction, that what may confuse people thinking that, yes, we're going to go down again into lower lows. But it's exactly what happened in March. Remember, this banking collapse around the 9th to the 13th of March, that was huge emotional times, huge, huge, huge emotional times. But the price was higher. It's all we have to do. We just have to look at the chart. That's the huge emotional time, which we are a long way from now, a reasonable way. And this is the October low. I just got to look at a chart. It's unbelievable how different the news headlines are compared to what's actually going on right there with the facts on the chart. Now, this one is super interesting. S&P 500 stocks in a bear market. These red areas are areas that I've used here as a backtest parameters to give me an indicator of where these lows come in. When might be a great time to be dollar cost averaging or basically just buying up in the stock market. And of course, we can use the same uh, principle across into cryptocurrencies, into Bitcoin. It's exactly what we do here anyway. Just look for those extreme fearful times. And in this case, it's basically looking at uh, the amount of stocks that are in bear markets. Every time it's around 0.6, it's been a great buying opportunity. This one, granted, was not the best. That's in July of 2008, which was on the verge of the major collapse. But like we go back to our cycle here, we're in the midst of this stage. 2008 was actually this period here. That was the major collapse in the market. That's the period that I think will be coming up after 2026 and will lead into some sort of 
date range there across the globe, across the globe, US, UK, Canada, Australia, you name it, Western developed countries are probably going to experience something like this. Some may maybe a bit longer, some may a little bit, maybe a little bit shorter, but we're all going to go through some sort of major collapse in years to come. So going back to this point, we're not in that stage at the moment. But if we want to change the parameters here and bring it up to seven, which means there would be less buying opportunities here, looking at the S&P 500 stocks that were in a bear market with those parameters, we can see that it's brought up the three most significant times in the market from 2008 to 2009 on that climb out of the bear market low. Again, throughout that exact period of the most fearful time from the pandemic. And now two key areas, those two lows that we've been looking at June and October on the S&P 500. This is the, the June low right here. That was the most extreme fearful time. And then the October low came in slightly lower, but it wasn't as fearful. So we're getting a divergence between how people are feeling about the market and where the price is. Slightly lower, but they're less fearful. So they're buying. And that's what exactly what we've seen now since October. So we're, we're coming up now to six months. That was a four, but basically six months from that particular low. And looking at this, they have been the best times to be accumulating in the market when it's at 0.7 or above on the reading of the S&P 500 stocks in a bear market. So essentially a lot of the stocks are in a bear market at those points, basically calling for the lows at that point, being a reasonable indicator that we'll probably see higher prices to come. Speaking of higher prices to come, NASDAQ is up again, 26.5% from the October low. It's had a secondary low in November, another low in January, a higher low again, another higher low in March, which was the banking collapse, which you almost cannot even see the significance of those news headlines now. It is literally where my cursor is these few days is where it's pointing. And the news was so severe, you would have expected if you looked at a chart to see something so severe, like what happened from those tops, a, you know, a solid 30, 40% that we saw. So if we just go from the top here, to the lows, there you go, about a 35 to 40% right to that October bottom there. So you would have expect something quite severe, but of course there'll be the excuses that, well, the government stepped in, et cetera, et cetera. It is what happened, but this is what we were calling uh, in advance for a low in March. And we can see that it's happening here on the chart. We're getting higher lows. You can see that nice move up now, forming a higher low above those tops and now pushing through 50% and coming somewhere towards the mid $13,000 region. The close here above that 13.6 to 13,800 is gonna be very, very nice for the NASDAQ and start to cement itself in position for the, the remainder of 2023 to position itself in a more bullish market, a bullish structure to go higher. Speaking of bullish structures, onto BTC. And if you're enjoying the content here and you're seeing how these markets are playing out, hit that like, subscribe to the channel. If you wanna get more details, link in the top of the video description here, free crypto and economic report. And of course, check out the other links there for our trading uh, exchanges. Uh, great comments from you guys as well. Actually very grateful for the contrary, um, contrary position. When we were at the bottom, it was my own thesis too. So good on you for doing your own research and sticking to it. And it, it just helped you stay sane through the intense FUD. That was super intense. And if you didn't see it, if you weren't here in the market in March, unfortunately, you won't have lived through that. But you can always, if you did, you can look, look back on that and use it as part of your trading plan. It's so important to go through those times. Mind-blowing analysis. Thank you. Content is, is incredible. All right. Enough blowing up, blowing my own horn there. Thank you very much, guys. As for BTC, to the downside, looking at the support levels here at about $26,500, the market continues to hold up $26,500. So in terms of a percentage to the downside, roughly 4 to 5%. To the upside, I think we've got some resistance at about $30,000. You know, these are the levels that we've looked at. If we just go back to that, that top, it's around 5%. So essentially, it's right in that midway point, approximately 5 to the downside, 5 to the upside. So there's not too much going on here until BTC breaks out. Of course, the bears are still calling for prices sub 20,000 and sub the previous low at 15K. 
If that happens, the structure completely changes and that would be a prolonged bear market. You'd probably have a long time to be able to accumulate and things would just be over. It's it, It'll be done with. So I can't see that happening based on the structure here with a $15,500 low and then a $19,500 low as well. So in this case, for a pullback, I'm happy with anything essentially above around $24,000 to $25,000. But I think a lot of people are waiting for those prices as well. So late Bitcoin investors, late Bitcoin buyers are probably going to get crushed if they keep waiting for these lower prices. Something that's maybe 14% lower at around that $23,900 to $24,000. So they're waiting to buy up lower only to see the price potentially pull back not as far, maybe to these tops here at 25, maybe just take out these lows here at 26 and a half, putting in 26,000, who knows? It's, but it's not that much of a percent away. This will obviously blow up in Twitter saying that it's on, the bear market's back, all the bulls are wrong, you're getting too greedy, yada, yada, yada. That's the same sort of crap that we always hear. But it's not that much of a percentage when you actually just pull up a, a measuring tool and have a read of it. It's not that big of a deal. Even down to here, 14%, who cares? Bitcoin's up 81% from the 15K low. 81%, as I tweeted out before. There's the top there at 88.8%. The current price is 80.3%. Uh, so it's a long way up. You have to expect some corrections as well. To the upside, it's getting a little bit late in the game, but of course we do have the resistance at around 30K. We've talked about resistance at 32K, which are previous levels going back to uh, the falls here. And then the 50% levels above are about 23, 24, 25% away from that point. So if we needed to buy in here, I still think this is a reasonable area in the 27,000s, as you can see, Looking to the downside, maybe it's about 14 or so percent, maybe a little less here at 12 or 13. To the upside, potentially, yes, we got 30K in, in front of us. We got 32K, we got 33K, we got 35K in front of us. So there are some um, resistance levels and it's probably going to slow down the market a bit, but at least you've still got potentially a two to one reward here. What does that mean? Basically to the downside, possible 12% loss to the upside, possible 24% gain. Possible. Remember, nothing is guaranteed, but those uh, areas of risk and reward are getting shorter and shorter. So better late than never, but of course, keep those stops in play just in case anything does uh, start to pull back a little bit from here. From here, like and subscribe bell notification icon. That's the update for today, looking at Bitcoin and those stock markets. I think that's an incredible indicator over here, just looking at those significant lows in the market where S&P stocks have been in the bear market. And from that point, the market's basically pushed up. If you give it a little more tolerance, you can see that we had some significant lows during that entire bull market. And there was also great times to be buying up as well. As for BTC, let's see what happens over the course of today. I'll be back again tomorrow. Like, subscribe, bell notification. Of course, videos are popping up here to stay tuned to and learn more from. I'll see you guys at the next video. Until then, peace out.